Welcome back to my channel, Geophysics for Everyone. I do hope that you enjoy the video. Thank you. Today we are going to talk about magnetic remanence. What is magnetic remanence? This video is a part of a series intended for a fourth year course entitled Capita Selecta in Geophysics or Special Topic in Geophysics at Institute Technology Bandung. The body that contains magnetic minerals could be magnetized. A simple example is a nail that becomes magnetized because it is rubbed by a permanent magnet. Thus, the, magneti the magnetized nail is said to have a magnetization. If the magnetization is permanent, then it is called magnetic remanence. Now, in nature, because of the presence of very fine magnetic minerals, substances such as rocks, sediments, and even archaeological artifacts might record the directions and the intensity of the Earth's magnetic field at the time of their formation. These records are simply termed magnetic remanence or leftover magnetization. There are processes to sort and decipher these records into valuable information. So the natural remanence could be divided into special uh, uh, in specific uh, categories. The first one is called the thermal remanent magnetization. So this type of magnetizations happen when a substance become cooler and cooler and beyond the uh, cooling temperature. For, for instance, you have lava. Molten lava at the temperature of about 1500 centigrade is not, magnetic, uh, is not uh, magnetic because the current temperatures of minerals such as uh, magnetite is only around 580 degrees. But as the lava cools and then become cooler and cooler and then lower than 580 centigrade, then it's become magnetized. And as it's cooled down, it records the Earth's magnetic field at the time of their uh, uh, cooling. This is called the thermal remanent magnetization. The other type of um, natural remanence is called the chemical remanent magnetization or CRM. This happens, for instance, if you have, let's say in the rocks, you have native irons. And over time, this native iron react with uh, uh, oxygen. And then you would have a new uh, magnetic uh, uh, minerals, let's say uh, hematite or rust. This uh, hematite could then serve as uh, uh, magnetic recorders. It would record the Earth's magnetic uh, field during their formation. Sediments also could uh, record the Earth's magnetic field. For instance, if a tiny uh, particulates then come to uh, a deposit in a lake or in, uh, uh, in the sea, then over time these uh, sediments become compacted. So these tiny magnetic minerals would align along the Earth's magnetic field so that the sediments could have a record of directions and as well as the intensity of the Earth's magnetic field during the deposition. Sometimes the, deposit, the, uh, the recording of the Earth's magnetic field happen uh, later, could be uh, hundreds or thousands years later during what's so called the compaction of the sediment. In these situations, the magnetization is called the PDRM, post-depositional remanent magnetization. Some rocks could also become magnetized because of event like lightning. Okay? So lightning is basically a, a very high uh, uh, current, and this current creates magnetic field, although it's very short. So the rocks around the, uh, the rocks that close to the uh, lightning could become uh, magnetized. Okay, this kind of remnant is called the isothermal remnant magnetization. Some other rocks or, or sediments could also become magnetized because they are exposed to the Earth's magnetic field for so long. 
In this situation, the remanence, reman, remanence is called the VRM, the viscous remanent magnetization. So this type of uh, natural remanents are actually being uh, emulated in, uh, in the lab. So we could basically heat up the rocks beyond uh, the current temperatures of the, of the magnetic minerals and then cool it down in a particular field, for example. This is what's called the artificial TRM. We could also do the same thing with uh, chemical remanents, with detrital remanents, as well as the uh, post-depositional remnants, you could basically simulate the uh, formations of sediments and then you make the uh, uh, compaction. Okay? You also could do this artificial IRM. You basically expose the uh, substance to high magnetic field in the lab that uh, probably similar to the, the uh, uh, not necessarily to the lighting but something similar to that because normally the uh, the field is not as uh, great as uh, lightning. There's another uh, type of remanence that is uh, probably in, it's not happening in uh, nature. It's called the IRM, anhistatic remanent magnetization. In this magnetization, so basically, you have uh, uh, samples exposed to two different type of uh, magnetic field. One is a direct field, and the other one is alternating field. This type of remanence is called the AR, uh, ARM, the anhistatic remanent magnetization. Those who uh, deal with rock magnetisms uh, should uh, uh, make themselves familiar with this uh, ARM because it's used uh, very often. So why remanence is important? There's scientific benefits for uh, learning the remanence. For instance, there's a science called paleomagnetism. It's looking at the magnetic remanence recorded in rocks that, have, that probably formed many million years ago. So these uh, rocks would uh, basically record the positions of their formation. There's also what's so called the polarity timescale and magnetostratigraphy. As mentioned in the previous video, the Earth's magnetic field uh, could experience uh, reversal, for example. And this magnetic reversal is a global phenomenon. Okay, so the, the, the scientists have uh, uh, basically determined the dates of these reversals, and this reversal could be used now as a tools for stratigraphy. That is called the magnetostratigraphy. The remnants could also uh, use to uh, check or, or to study what's so called the paleo intensity record. The Earth magnetic field is actually the intensity is not constant. The intensity varies from time to time, and this paleo intensity uh, record become uh, important not only for stratigraphy, but most uh, most of the, uh, but more than that, it's very important to study the behavior of the uh, uh, Earth, the uh, and uh, and also the generation of the Earth magnetic field. The uh, remnants could also become uh, uh, evidence for what so called the secular variation. Remnants is also used for archaeological dating, and in some cases, it's used for dating the volcanic activities. The mechanisms of remnant acquisition in rocks and sediments contributed greatly to the understanding of what so called fine particle magnetism. Fine particle magnetism, in turn, is used in many applications from the development of magnetic recording media to biomagnetism. In the next video, we will be talking about rock magnetism. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.